We are back, you are chatting with John P. Today, we are going to be talking about some watches that have increased massively in demand. At Delray Watch, delraywatch.com, we field questions and comments and emails and messages uh, on places like our website and Instagram, The Real John P., where you can find me. Um, and I do my best to respond to everyone uh, there. But we receive so many of these things, and with this comes requests for watches. That's that's right. We have a, a, a new watch section where we partner up authorized dealers with those that are looking for new watches, and we have you know certain pre-negotiated rates that you can get the best price on a new watch directly from authorized dealer with the warranty card. And so because of this, we receive so many of these requests for watches, and I'm going to share with you the watches that I've seen so much of an increase in demand with some of them that we cannot honestly even get any more, uh, especially the, the more desirable variants of these watches. And also, we do talk with a lot of other dealers and pre-owned dealers and new dealers out there in the world on different trading platforms and message groups, and we hear a lot of feedback from them as well that really confirms what I'm seeing here at Del Rey. On the wrist, I have a museum grade vintage IWC 666 Ingenieur, very crispy example. You can see uh, close up pictures of this on, on my Instagram, The Real John P. Love this recent addition actually to my personal collection. And one last uh, kind of little mention here, if you have the new social media um, kind of networking app called Clubhouse where people can talk about ideas and things and kind of really network and share interests, find me on there. I'll uh, try to put a link in the description below if I can. It's a brand new app. If you have um, access to that, please find me there and we will talk about watches first. The Zenith Chronomaster Sport, the El Primero that looks like a Daytona. Even though Rolex used their movements, Zenith's El Primero movements, for a certain period of time when they were um, making Daytonas, Rolex was, they were using the Zenith movements. Actually, they were um, kind of down throttling, uh, so to say, the beat rate to, in their words, make them a little bit more consistent and easy to service, because uh, that is something to, to consider when we talk about, um, you know, one tenth of a second chronographs, they have to be serviced a little bit more. Though Zenith does say, I'm going on a tangent, but Zenith does say that they've introduced some interesting materials into the movement to make um, kind of the components stronger and more resistant to that extra stress. So you don't have to, but in the, in the eyes of a watchmaker, including Hans, you certainly should service them a little bit more, um, a little bit more precision timekeeping there. Um, but nonetheless, this recent release, I'm sure you've all seen it. There'll be a picture here. Setting aside the fact that I tried to buy one for myself, so many other people reached out to us at Delray Watch. They wanted this watch. They're willing to pay retail or even more than retail. And we tried our best to just find even one example for someone. Couldn't do it. Completely sold out. They have wait lists or pretend wait lists, whatever you want to call them. You can't find the watch. It's not possible. I also don't know of anyone that's received actually the watch um, with the... Um, kind of with the exemption of the um, the uh, the Green Bay Packers, I believe they have uh, a new spokesperson, you know, excuse me, I don't I don't follow all the, the different athletes for all the different teams, but there is a notable um, NFL player, I believe from the Green Bay Packers that Zenith signed on and gave him this watch. And now he's kind of like the spokesperson uh, for this watch as an alternative to Rolex. But this watch so desirable. And I have to tell you, I'm sorry if you reach out to us, we cannot find it. No one can find this. Maybe you'll get lucky if you go to a Zenith boutique somewhere in the world, if Zenith still has any boutiques. I don't know that they necessarily have any brand owned boutiques left in the United States, but go to an authorized dealer and try, call them, and somehow if you get one, you're very lucky and there is a list of people that want to pay over retail. Next, we have the Omega Seamaster Ceramic Bezel Wave Dial. This watch, I did another video about it and I th we received 
over 13 orders for different variants of this watch, mostly on a bracelet, but we received over 13 orders in a short period of time for this watch, and that's not normal for us for one particular model. So I was pretty shocked to see that we could not, you know, help everyone out with, um, you know, partnering up and finding them the watch because even Omega has run out of certain versions and variants of this watch, like the white dial. Um, the white dial on the bracelet can't find it you can get the white dial I guess on the strap and people are settling for this watch and any of the variants on the strap now Because you just can't find it on the bracelet now You can go through other kind of means of sourcing the bracelet go on the forums go on eBay But it's my understanding that even if you wanted to buy the bracelet from Omega it might not be readily available because while you used to be able to go to brands, and some brands still do this, but let's talk about Omega, let's talk about Rolex, you used to be able to walk in and have them put a different bracelet or have them put a different strap on the watch, but starting with Rolex and now Omega, who's kind of following in the footprints uh, or the tracks of Rolex with their tactics, tactics and uh, techniques and tactics and strategies, uh, they've kind of done this as well, where you get the watch as configured and maybe they won't switch it for you unless it's a watch they really need to move. And this is a watch they don't need to move because everyone wants it currently. So you have to get it on a strap or maybe not at all. Once again, fair warning, if you reach out to us, we might not be able to find it at this time because we're being told that in our network of authorized dealers, even Switzerland does not know when the distributors here in the US are gonna get them and push them out to boutiques and authorized dealers. So keep your eyes on this one. If you, have, if you absolutely have to have it, don't mind paying retail because the, de the demand is there, the desirability is there, and when this becomes discontinued, just like they discontinued the flat dial, th it's gonna be difficult to find. And if you're the guy that needs this watch, do you wanna pay more than what you would have paid today? I don't know, something to consider, and people certainly are considering this. Next, this one is an absolute shocker for me. This one is the Cartier Santos de Cartier in skeleton variant. Now. I don't believe this at all, but it is happening. So Cartier, obviously an old world brand, very old, rich history and heritage for so many other things besides watches. We're talking jewelry, accessories, and so many other things they've done over the years and partnerships and even you know glasses and sunglasses and, and you name it, their name has been associated with so many things, luxury, even vehicles. I think they had a Lincoln town car Cartier version where, you know, there'd be like a Cartier clock on the dash, something like that. If someone out there, I know someone out there owned one of these, please leave in the comments below. I would love to hear kind of your uh, glory day stories about the riding in the old Lincoln uh, Cartier. Uh, nonetheless, this watch is actually a really nice watch. And I saw celebrities begin to wear this watch. And when you see celebrities kind of get into something that's not that popular and it starts to be a trend, now, I say not popular, but it's just not popular Cartier as a brand in the last decade compared to Patek Philippe with these 7-11s or other Patek Philippe's and Rolex sports models um, and even some Datejust in the Richard Mille in that kind of celebrity realm. That's what you were seeing on the wrist. But now to see kind of people carry over into this kind of interesting, newer, more junior design and style, younger variant of what would be otherwise a classic watch from an old world brand, that shows something to me. It shows trends and talking with other dealers and also here at Delray, Del Rey, people want this watch. They do want this watch. Now, it's nothing close to a sports model uh, Rolex. It's nothing close to even the Zenith Chronomaster Sport. But for the brand Cartier that has released some watches that uh, they brought back from the dead, like the Pasha, classic in its own regard, but not something that necessarily a watch geek is going to put want to put in their collection, but they came out with that again and talking about some of the older kind of dog models like the Roadster, which I've even owned um, personally, but the desirability is very low towards the end of it. Um, and even today in the pre-owned market, the Roadster doesn't do too well. And when you look at a watch like this, just kind of changing things up with their 9611 MC caliber movement, thin skeleton double barrel watch movement in-house by Cartier. You love to see it and also people really do want this watch. So keep this one on your radar. I think that this is going to grow so much in terms of collectability and desirability. 
I don't know about them in terms of the price increase or decrease. It's a little bit too early to tell, but certainly people want this watch and the celebrities pushing it kind of by wearing it as well, um, I think is a good indicator of what is to come. And lastly, this is uh, a name that I'm going to butcher, but we've had them here at Delray, but it's a Corona watch. It's by Hajime Asaoka, and he's a Japanese watchmaker, master watchmaker. And he designs complications as well as completely entirely in-house made on his bench in Japan watches that start at $50,000 and sky is the limit when you work with this master craftsman. And this is a brand, this Corono brand, where they kind of used him as the designer and apparently he was part of the production process, though it, it gets a little bit gray in terms of how... Um, connected he is to the project when this brand launched a couple of years ago maybe even two years ago or less i remember that they had a black uh, variant of the original dress watch as well as an eggshell or a white variant and they may have had another color that was specific only to singapore um, authorized dealers or sincere watch or something like that there was a third that was really difficult to get but nonetheless these were a couple thousand dollar watches with miota movements quite honestly and the chronographs have a Seiko chronograph, which is a nice movement in its own right. But when you start talking about spending $4,000, I'm just kind of injecting a little personal opinion. It gets a little bit difficult to do so when for $4,000 you can get, you know, uh, more than an entire uh, Omega Seamaster, uh, which is very desirable. And it comes from a very old world, uh, not quite old world, but certainly a old brand. And to see this come out of, a watchmaker that's been making watches since 1997 and then his more affordable line that he doesn't make that really shows that when you pair that with how desirable these are and i'll tell you one of the models that i believe was 2000 or 2500 retail somewhere in that range i think that's right actually i just had to to check with fed here through this window we sold one of these watches for over seven thousand dollars 7500 and i think it was the lowest price in the world as well. So this was market price and we took it in on a trade. We weren't sure about it because, you know, this is a very young brand and affordable brand with Miyota movements, Seiko movements in them. So sometimes when we see that in a watch, we're kind of put back a little bit, but you know, if the markets can support it, we'll help out on a trade. You know, it's not a watch that, that we're going to be on a waiting list and hope to get um, just because of that speculative nature, though this does seem to be a trend where these watches are so desirable. And, and I'll mention we had the green dial variants. So, you know, green dials are kind of a thing right now. You know, perhaps people wanted it for that reason. Um, but when you pair that with kind of the entry level nature of the watch and this demand compared to what it's selling at secondhand price compared to the retail price, the desirability, it's just seeing massive bullish turns and a trend on this one. I don't know what to make of this. It's not really something that you see a whole lot with watches that are more affordable. I'm speaking in, in you know, terms of, in comparisons of watches that he makes for $50,000 plus. Now he has a thousand, two thousand $2,000 watch here selling for seven. And I'll say I held the watch. And while I do like the design, it's a thousand dollar watch. It's on par with any other micro brand for a thousand dollars. He has his name on it. He's really no well, uh, really well known in terms of high-end independence. If only FP Jorn could come out with kind of a Junior Jorn or something like that, where he puts a Seiko movement inside of a um, a Chinese-made case, that would probably also be a knockout and do the same thing. But I'm just not sure, right? It's a little bit, it's a little bit different here. But nonetheless, this if you're looking for a watch to maybe speculate on i think people are speculating on these just looking at the market prices i wouldn't advise it because i just don't think it makes sense and honestly in terms of the the technology behind it as well as the construction of the watch taking hajime asaoka out of the question it's a thousand dollar watch and any other brand any other label in the world but we all know that having the best specs doesn't necessarily make the watch or anything the most desirable look at Rolex, for example, I did a video talking about the Omega Seamaster, which ha actually is very desirable currently, but not as desirable as the Submariner, and it beats the Submariner spec for spec. So something to consider. 
names do mean something when we're talking about luxury goods and watches. But what do you guys think? Do you have any of these watches in your collection? I would love to hear it in the comments below. Also, if you have one of these Corona watches, I would love to hear maybe why you added it to your collection. Did you love it? Did you think maybe you would speculate? I didn't mean to beat it up too hard. I do really like the designs. I just think for $7,000, you can get a whole lot of watch for the money, but that's the market price. So if you want it, that's kind of where you're at. Thanks guys. You've been chatting with John P. Ciao.